Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we want to give you at Commodity TV an update yeah, with Endeavor Silver and of course with the co-founder and CEO, Bradford Cook. Brad, good morning to Vancouver. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Welcome. Super, perfect. Good to see you. Healthy, in good shape. That's how we want it in those crazy times, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Super. Yeah, Endeavor Silver. I mean, we know your company extremely well, and uh, we were talking a lot of, lot of times at Commodity TV, but uh, I think uh, you overcame your problems definitely fantastically, and you had uh, quite a good year last year, and also your guidance for 2021 looks fantastic. Despite you do not have the final yet which uh, we will have like i think on uh, first march uh, which is great and second march we want to do a virtual roadshow together so um can you give us some ideas production guidance 2021 how does it look like yes for this year our production we're forecasting to be slightly higher than last year if you recall last year we guided six to seven million ounces of silver equivalents gold being mm -hmm. the only equivalent and this year we're guiding uh, about 100,000 ounces higher than that. So 6.1 to 7.1. Um, our cost guidance this year is a little bit higher, but that's mainly because of higher taxes. That's mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the downsides of higher metal prices. And also we have a sliding scale royalty on our Gona CV mine, which is our largest mine. And so our royalty payments will be higher this year as well. Uh, in fact, there's uh, probably a $4 per ounce in increased taxes and royalties in 2021. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. that's, that's part of yeah. the all sustaining cost. Yeah, okay. So when you say a uh, sliding or moving uh, royalty and taxes, uh, would that be like, let, let's assume silver goes to $40. Would that kill the profit or would it be then a little bit more on the on the easy side? No, the sliding scale stops at $25. Aha. Okay, good. Perfect. So this is then like the last up move uh, from that side uh, in, yeah. <laughs> in your cost scene. Okay, so 19 to $20 is the AISC for next year. That means uh, still uh, that you have a nice profit margin, I would say. Um, also interesting was for me to see your last quarter production was the highest in two years. How did that come then? Well, we had a very good year last year, notwithstanding the COVID pandemic. And the reason is very simple. You know, after uh, two, three years, very tough years in operations, 2017, 18, 19, uh, we launched turnarounds at uh, Guana Civi and Bolanitos in 2019. And very simply, we we completed those turnarounds last year and the results could be seen in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay, super fantastic. We look forward to, to know then the numbers uh, <laughs> in detail, definitely. Also, I think a real highlight of last year was the full turnaround, as you said it already, with Guana Civi and Bolanitos. So you've done very well there, which was like the uh, uh, sorrow child, as we say in German, a little bit for the last years. But what, what is also going on with El Compass? I mean, that's the, the, the smallest mine you have, but what's going on there? Well, I like to say that El Compass is our boring mine because it's steady state. It's, there's no drama. Uh, it just keeps chugging along. It's generating free cash flow. Um, we, uh, I think the biggest change last year was that through our exploration on the Calicanto property adjacent to the El Compass plant, mm -hmm. uh, we found some new resources in two veins. And we're currently evaluating how to get those resources into the mine plans. So. Mm -hmm. Compass is really just extending the mine life. Extending the mine life is the main focus at this time. Mm -hmm. But making money. And making money. That's important, I would say. <laughs> Super. As we are talking already about exploration, I saw that you have quite a nice exploration budget uh, in, in your numbers uh, you have published. And I really appreciate it because this is the future. And also you brought out uh, proven and probable reserves are up 11%. And if I do my calculation, let's say a little bit on the conservative side, with those uh, silver and gold numbers, you have easily a mine life of eight years, I would say, right? Uh, well, certainly having grown the proven and probable reserves substantially, uh, we're in a much better position now for my life than we've been in for years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, uh, as you saw from our announcement, the reserves were up 11%. Um, we also added to our inferred resources. So there was some success in uh, growing the resource base as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, so what would that mean, let's say, with your exploration budget? Where do you focus? And uh, also, do you think uh, that you would have, like, uh, with the Alcurso property, for example, um, 
some new discoveries, some stuff you could then in the future figure into the mind plan, which is not yet seen, right? So at uh, Guanasavi, the El Curso ore body is still wide open in two mm -hmm. directions, and we'll give it a big push in drilling this year to see what the limits of those resources are. So we expect higher resources from Guanasavi this year. Um, similar to Bolanitos, we're focused more on reserve replacement at Bolanitos. And because of the Mayadito discovery and now developing mm -hmm. Belen vein this year, <clears throat> I think you'll see that uh, it'll be another uh, good year of uh, replacing reserves and extending mine life at Bolanitos. Uh, but the two big pushes this year on exploration are the two programs we didn't do last year. You know, we, we suspended our drilling at Paral and Terranera for most of 2020 because we were focused on the economic studies at Paral. And of course, we were finishing our turnarounds of the three operations. Uh, but now that's all done. We've returned our focus to uh, large drilling programs at both Terranera and Paral this year and going forward. So we have uh, great expectations for new discoveries and new resources at both projects. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So you named it already Terronera. I think is uh, is uh, to me it looks a bit like uh, that this is the key property for the future, for the short term future of uh, Endeavor Silver. First of all, production wise, but secondly also cost wise, because it would once in production it would significantly bring down the let's say overall group costs, right? So what's the status there? Um, I remember that you wanted to do a sixty million dollar ATM financing, and uh, let's say probably <laughs> with the good year you had already 2020 i could imagine that you uh, have uh, put a lot of cash aside uh, for terronera for the development uh, we will see that i know in first march but uh, i i can also do some mathematics here and uh, it, i would be astonished if not and so for me i would say everything is in a, in a perfect way in a perfect shape to really go full throttle with terronera to get it uh, built right so you're absolutely right. We did add a lot of cash to Treasury last year, but we didn't touch that $60 million ATM. It's still there. Mm -hmm. All of the cash came from operations, from profits. Mm -hmm. And just to review, I believe at the end of 2019, we had something like $20 million cash, uh, plus or minus. Mm -hmm. And at the end of September, that was $45 million cash. We had our best quarter in two years, so do the math. Okay. Uh, yes, we've been adding cash to Treasury, and uh, uh, we will do a TED financing for Terra and Air. That's uh, my second quarter uh, focus. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> we're in great shape financially with no long-term debt. Absolutely. No, that, that is fantastic. I love it because it's non-dilutive. That's important for shareholders, as we are all shareholders of your company. Um, what would be then, let's say, the focus for Terronera this year, the time plan for Terronera, because I really, honestly, I cannot wait to see this mine to go in production. So I can give you a little more organic, deeper dive on, on what's going on. Uh, if you recall last year, we hired a director of project development and he actually hired a project manager and he hired a community manager and a procurement manager and engineering manager. So we've been building out our, our project development team. We completed last summer the final pre-feasibility study, if you recall, and at current prices, the net present value of that project is uh, $350 million after tax. Wow. And the internal rate of return was up around 65% on the $100 million of capital investment estimated in that study. Mm -hmm. uh, however, what was special about the study was the costs. If you recall, mm -hmm. uh, there's about a 60-40 silver gold split of revenues and we report silver production net of the gold credit. And in, in the case of Terra Nera, uh, the gold pays for everything and the cash costs are free. Cash costs are zero, silver is yep. free. Even on an all-in sustaining cost basis, including life of mine operating costs, capital investments, expiration expenditures, uh, taxes, royalties, uh, general and administrative costs, even after all of that, the last year's study estimated all in sustaining costs at $2.10 per ounce of silver produced. Mm -hmm. So that's what's special about Terra Nera. It's a game changer. Mm -hmm. When we bring it on, it will come on at uh, almost doubling our production. So it'll add 6 million ounces of silver production per year for a minimum mm -hmm. 10 years. And, uh, and at, at uh, uh, the costs forecasted, it'll, uh, on a consolidated basis, uh, more than half. Our yeah, it should be $10 around then, right? 
So it's, it's, it's a calculation. Very significant impact. Now, talking about this year, uh, we already set aside $9 million uh, as a capital budget in the first half of 2021, primarily for ordering of long lead equipment, down payments on long lead equipment. In fact, we've already purchased an, and have now in a warehouse in Puerto Vallarta, uh, the big ball mill for the, for the uh, plant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And more of that is coming here uh, in the first half of the year. Uh, we are planning to have the feasibility study uh, mid-summer, so July, and uh, we're on track with that study so that we can go to the board in August for a development decision. And assuming that it's a positive decision, then uh, we would be in a position to break ground in September. Uh, we have all the major construction permits. And um, uh, while we haven't published a uh, second half budget, it would be... Um, you know, $30 million, something like that, just breaking ground, clearing the plant site, collaring the decline to the mine, uh, getting the construction camp built. We'll have a temporary camp to get started using contractors. Uh, but ultimately we need something like a, a four to 500 man camp that would be trailers. And we have, we've identified the sites. So it's just a question of uh, spending the next few months getting organized. So a lot wow. going on in Terra Nero. And then fantastic. it's an 18, 18 months construction schedule, yeah. six months commissioning. So two years from the time we break ground. Yeah, so 2023, you would be in production. Correct. Love to hear that. That's fantastic. Super. Thank you. Fantastic thing. And um, yeah, what else one do I want to know here on my list? Hi, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. You, you answered almost everything. Um, oh, yeah. One thing. Why have you granted the option to Richstone Mining uh, of the Guadalupe Galvo project? Was that too small for you or was it not necessary? Or Yeah, we took the view that it's a non-core asset. We did spend uh, a couple million bucks there. Uh, doing exploration for endeavor-sized discoveries. We didn't find an endeavor-sized discovery. We have a Ridgestone-sized discovery. So mm -hmm. our rationale was, uh, if it's not big enough for us, let's sell it. We keep mm -hmm. the cash, the stock, the royalty. Uh, it's accretive. Yeah, perfect. So you, you must not spend money, but you earn money from time to time. And if they're bringing it in production, you have an NSR. Correct. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a small <laughs> deal for us. But, yeah, uh, but it why helps. Let it, why let it sit there? We felt that it should move ahead with a small company. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, when you can monetize something, this makes always sense because when you can monetize externally, you must not raise any money nor do any debt and uh, you need the money for Terra that's for sure. Every penny helps. Super. Perfect. Yeah, Bradford, thank you very much. It was a great update. And uh, as I said, we do on the 2nd March then, uh, which is already in three weeks, uh, we do the virtual roadshow with your numbers. And I really look forward to that because I have a very good feeling that your treasury would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look Super. forward to talking to you then. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much, Brad. All the best. Have a great weekend. Okay. Thank Ciao. you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Bradford Cook, the CEO and co-founder of Endeavor Silver, one of the largest silver producers in the world. And you heard it, the company is doing extremely well. The fourth quarter was fantastic, outstanding, the best quarter in two years. And uh, what I like uh, to hear is, of course, first of all, the progress on Terronera. That's exactly what that company needs because it will double the, pro uh, the production and uh, half the costs in the group. This is outstanding because money, money, money and margins is key for success success in the future. Also, the exploration is moving extremely well. Nice budgets for this year. And I would say the company is well set up to benefit a lot from the upcoming rising silver price because we are very close to really good fun in the silver markets. That is also for sure. So I would suggest you check out the company very close and uh, wish you also a very good weekend. Thank you very much for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.